influence the success of the athletes. Well, it's because they are newsworthy. We have to put it out there because it's what will bring in people to watch TV, to watch our sports shows, missing script papers. Welcome to this game of legends. This is a special episode as it is our first. Thank you for your support. On this episode, we will be discussing the role of the media in helping grassroots athletes achieve their dreams. Yes, good afternoon. I have the privilege to have here with me Mr. Olawale Adigun. He's the head of sports, Laskadi FM 90.1, and the assistant media officer, Nigerian Theatrian Union. So, Mr. Wali, thank you for joining me in this episode. You're a media officer, and we will be going through that direction. One of the things um, we try to do with the brand is to support and inspire underprivileged athletes, especially those on the grassroots level. And I personally believe that the media is a very powerful tool that can be used, utilized to help take the grassroots athletes from where they are now to the level that they want to be, the future that they see for themselves. From your experience and, of course, your portfolio, I'd like a few points, if you may, as to what you think, what role do you think the media plays into helping grassroots athletes achieve their dream? Yeah, thank you very much, Olamide. Um, I think that the media plays a very, very huge role because, I mean, the, the basic job of the media is to always, you know, disseminate information. Um, so our job is to disseminate information to the wider audience or the wider public about these athletes. Um, I choose to call them open coming athletes. Um, I mean, they are underprivileged, the aren't they? They don't have facilities, they don't have the exposure, but I, I will go with the up and coming because, I mean, these people can, these athletes can blossom and become world-class, you know, athletes. Like, I mean, there are plenty of examples from home and abroad. Uh, mm-hmm. But the media has to do more. Yeah, because so uh, that's very crucial. We're doing our best across traditional media, like television, radio. You can see sports journalists dedicated to ensuring that they can put these athletes out there. I do my bits, I think on my radio show a couple of years ago, Let's Talk Nigeria Football. And we're talking about Nigerian footballers. We talk about the MPFL, but also we're talking about the grassroots football as well, because we have a lot of them, you know, knows them in under. I think a colleague of mine, I'm at Channels TV, Austin Okonakman also does a great job with that. In fact, for all of his programs, there's always about 10, 15 minutes where he's talking about the emerging and rising talents, you know, from sports in Nigeria. And I mean, and there's always the tendency for the media to always focus too much on football too, you know, and like you said, also the assistant media officer of the triathlon union. And we have a lot of talent in triathlon that we have not even, you know, covered yet. It's a very interesting sport. At grassroots level, the union has been doing its best. Getting sponsors has been difficult because, you know, nobody wants to associate themselves with triathlon. It's always about football. Basketball also has got a lot of talent and, and kudos to a lot of, a lot of you know, ex-basketballers, administrators. They've also put in a lot into, you know, the, the open coming athletes. And the media has always been a part of that journey. So the Nigerian media plays a very huge role and um, they've been playing it well. But can they do more? Definitely we can. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, two things I have to say in response to that. Uh, number one is, as you know, the name of the podcast is called This Game of Legend. And what we're trying to do is to help grassroots athletes, you know, reorientate their thinking. And one of the things we believe is you do not have to be the richest footballer or the most successful, well, depending on what the parameter is, to achieve your dream. Right. We're trying to level up the playing ground. A lot of athletes play these days, or rather they aspire to become professional based on the pressure that, they, that we have. Don't you think that the media plays a huge role into creating that ideal of what success is? 
Like, look at the biggest players we have these days. The media, uh, what they publish, the stories. Wouldn't it help grassroots athletes if there's also some focus or some attention shifted towards them on what they are doing currently that is not necessarily bad? That's the first one. The second one I have to say is also something you mentioned. There's yeah. a lot of focus on football in Nigeria. So yeah. if you say anything about sports, I can back this up, but over 90% of Nigerians will think football, right? As you said, and it's even worse if you think about it going forward. If you think football, majority of people think playing football. You know, there's less focus on coaching, on sports business, sports education, sports politics, and so on and so forth. Now, where do you think the media should come in to sort of mitigate the perception of sports in the minds of the people? I, let, let, me, let me start with your first question. I, I can understand the fact that when the media puts it out there, the success of these athletes, some athletes like on the ground, in the grassroots, might, might tend to feel like, am I going to reach, attain this level of success? I think that athletes also have to turn this into a sort of an encouragement. They have to turn it into something that should ginger them to also to aspire to be like this people. I'm sure that young basketballers in Nigeria look at LeBron, look at Steve Curry. I mean, even if you look inwards, look at the very best basketballers in Nigeria and want to be like them. You're right that we front the success of these athletes, but it's because their news was, we have to put it out there because it's what will bring in people to watch TV, to watch our sports shows, missing street papers. But it should serve as a, a motivation to all of this graph. I don't even think that it's a bad thing that the media does that. But your second question, which is about, most of the second question again, hello? About the perspective of sports, what people think when they hear sports. Yeah, yeah. Football, 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 football. Well, gradually it is changing. Yeah, it is changing. Like you said, we don't talk about other aspects of sports. Sports business, sports marketing, sports law. There are different facets to sports. Well, you know what? We are in a society where there's a lot of poverty. We're in a society where, I mean, I didn't know the poverty numbers, but at a point in time on social media, Nigeria was always called the poverty capital of the world. And the easiest way for the common man, the easiest way for the common child these days is to play football because that is where the money is going to come from. And that's why you even see some of our talents go to obscure places like Indonesia. They go to Cyprus to go play football. Because that is the fastest way. Now ask me, I'm a sports journalist. I can never be as half as rich as a player who even plays in Tunisia, who plays in Egypt. How much do I earn? I'm a journalist. You know? So if you say that Nigerians don't care, or the media doesn't care to push out other aspects, it's because Nigerians would not accept it. The easiest way out of poverty for them. I mean, take a look at some of our Super Eagles players. Football was a source of escape from poverty, not sports business. So when you become rich, when you become made in football, then you can branch out and start doing all of these things. But that's not to say that we should, I mean, some people go to school and study physical education, which also leads to different things in, in sports. But we owe it to people to also, we're just a victim of our environment. Where, I mean, take a look at the World Cup final. It was Kylian Mbappe, it was Leo Messi. Everybody wants to be like Mbappe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's this, there's this common phrase now called Project Mbappe. Project Mbappe. And I saw it on TV sometime. Yeah. Yeah, Mbappe basically is like from cradle, from your child being a yeah. kid, you're already investing in, in that child to play football, to, be, to become someone like Kylian Mbappe who earns crazy money right now. So. You are not going to train your child to, to say become a sports lawyer. You yeah. want him to be a footballer because that's the fastest way, you know, to be on the hop. So it's a mixed bag. It's really a mixed bag. But I think that once again, we have to do more. Our high institutions also have to do more. I mean, how many schools in Nigeria has got courses relating to sports? Oh, I mean, the only thing you'll probably find is physical education. 
But you can, a lot of my friends have gone to the UK to study sports marketing. Some have online courses where they are studying, you know, different courses related to sports. But in Nigeria, the only thing you can get is physical education, trust me, even in the private universities. So if we add more of that also in our higher institutions, maybe it also goes a long way to encourage more people to say, hey, not only about football, I can also learn the workings around football. So I think that's my position on, on, on those questions. Yeah, thank you for that. I share your viewpoint on sports having the power because that's what actually motivates what I do with sports, apart from the fact yeah. that I have a, a career in sports or I have a, a background in sports education. I share that, that sports has something special to change the society. It's a game-changing tool of function or what have you. So now we established that there is a challenge in the society. People are poor, people are, are suffering. They've shifted their focus, their ambition to just making money and becoming successful through sports. Yeah. So how do we filter out those who have the genuine ambition based on the passion they have from sports and those who just want to go play football to make money? to help the family escape the, the, the harsh realities. When it comes to the media, how can we filter that out to also help people? Now, this question is in two parts. The second part of the question is, you mentioned something, Project Mbappe. How can mm. our people, our grassroots athletes begin to think beyond a football career? You know, so what can I do differently? For instance, mm, sports media, can I be a broadcaster in sports and, and I'm yeah. on it just to help them have like the people will say something to fall back on in case football does not work. It is not easy for a, a young man out there who probably has finished secondary school. Fine. And people have dreams. I had dreams to become a broadcaster and I mean, I'm living that dream, but things are changing. Now, a lot of people realize that sports broadcast is probably also making money up. You probably only have the fame. You don't have the money. Hmm. And every once again, is looking for ways to get out of the poverty line. We still have people, we have young men and women out there who want to go into broadcasting, sports broadcasting. Although I don't know about women, I think we even have a dearth of, of women sports journalists in Nigeria right now. We don't have quite a lot. But hopefully in, in the near future, we'll probably have more. But if you have the skill set to become a footballer, you just want to go to the end. You want to try every means possible. And that's why you see some players think they are ages. Some are probably 30 years and still claiming to be 21, 22 because they want to make it at by all costs. They don't mind going to Libya. I have a friend that plays in Djibouti. I mean, who plays football in Djibouti? I have a friend who plays there. You know, so everybody just wants to play. But back to your first question, Clyde, because I think that they are related. I think that we're gradually also able to train those who, because everybody cannot make it in football. Everybody can't. The Argentina side that won the World Youth Championship of 2005, I think they had Mikel Obi play, you know, in Holland. Yeah, and they played the Holland tie tie. Not everybody made it, even from our own team. We only know Mikel Obi, we only know Tai Tai Wu. Who are the rest? I mean, the rest never really made it big time. Same also happened to Argentina. Who had them, I think, Lionel Messi and Ma Mascherano, probably to a lesser extent, Nano Gago. The rest never really became really, really known. So, I mean, the fact that everybody has to realize that you can not make it for football, you also have to start preparing for, okay, if football doesn't work out, what is my fallback plan? In football. You know. In law, there's this competition called IFL. I don't know if you know about it. No, IFL is an high institution football league. There you see students who are aspiring to get their degrees in school also play football. You know, something that is close to collegiate football in America. You know, where high institutions play football. We see that also with the NCAA in the U.S. So through that, you can also see that people who have gone to school I play football and also I realizing that if I don't make it a football, I mean, I can become a top, top pundit. They look people like Moses Spears of Super Sport. I feel like I can do better than those guys. And you start, you know, get an interest. Oh, can I become a football administrator? Sasha Manam is one of the youngest football administrators in Africa. It's the one who runs beach soccer, you know, 
in Africa. He's doing, he's doing very well. And say, oh, I like what Sancho and Adam is doing right now. I want to be like him. So I can also play football on the side. Once again, not everybody who knows how to play. We have talents who are better than than the likes of uh, Wilfred in GD. We have plenty of them that are better than Alex Iwobi, Victor Sime. They are here in Nigeria. But not everybody can make it. You know, then I, I think that I, I maybe we'll still touch on it, but the number one problem with emerging athletes, with grassroots athletes, although, is the fact that they don't have the enabling environment to make them great. So, yes. I, I like that you mentioned that. Now, isn't that what we're trying to solve in the society? So they don't have an enabling environment. And we've established that sports can be used as a tool to change that situation. How can we do both at the same time? Use sports that is so great a tool to help them create an awareness and give them an enabling environment. Media again. And every environment comes from only one place. It doesn't come from the athletes. It comes from the government. That's where enabling environment comes from. Because government has to set the tone. Government has to get policies. Government has to ensure that we are not interfering, but we're just ensuring that you guys have facilities here and there. It's not even about the federal government. It can be as small as the local government. In Germany, I was reading about sports in Germany, not only football, but in, I think after every five kilometers, everywhere in Germany, there's always a sporting facility that yes. has a, a football pitch, has basketball court, that has everything. It's five kilometers or about 10 kilometers from each other. And that's to ensure that you don't go far you need to be able to use those facilities, either as a child, either as um, a teenager, youth or an adult. Every, and, and you could realize that that helped German sports. I mean, when Germany failed to go to the, well, well, I think, was it the World Cup in 98? They had to revamp their sports policy. And guess what? They enjoyed the fruits. Maybe it came late, but they won the World Cup in 2014. Yeah. They won the World Cup. And they went on a phase where they were really, really successful until yeah. recently yeah. when yeah. things started to go really south for them. So I think government has a huge role to play to create that environment. Look at Lagos, for example. All of our football pitches that we used to play on sand, they built our cement. If that's not bad enough, even the current ones that we have are semi-event centers as well for policy. Yes, exactly. Yearn for so, what have you, which is so sad to see. The only major sporting environment, I think we have in Lagos, I start to be correct. There has to be Rope Park. Rope Park in Yaba. And Rope Park has been around for a long, long time. Credits to them. They've always tried to maintain it. But what else do we have? We really have stadiums. And we have a very strange culture here of building stadiums for big. We don't build them to be multi purpose. We only build huge football stadiums. And I mean, we go to some places in the north and you realize that they have like, 50,000, 40,000 capacity stadiums. It's because of corruption, money has to, you have to make money from all of these big projects. But hardly will you find a stadium or you find um, a complex that is built for sports. I mean, I mean sports has a gym, has a boxing gym, has a swimming pool, has a running track. Whole range of, of activities. That. So that even ensures that you don't place emphasis on football. You know, people can go in there and say, okay, I want to do table tennis, I want to do tennis and everything, you know, but maybe things are gradually changing. I don't know. But anytime I think we've gotten to a turning point, we just seem to just go back. I mean, look at the guys who are running for the presidential elections. Ask any of them, even the one that is popular on social media, Peter will be, ask him what to believe is a sports policy. They don't have any. Even yeah. if they have any, it is not clear. There's no enough clarity on what they will do for sports at, at that level, at grassroots I level. I don't seem to understand the power that sports wield. Now, I'm going it, to, you said something about the government, that the, the, the box stops at the door of the government, that the ones responsible to help improve the situation of things as far as sports is concerned. You know, I share that viewpoint. However, I have another opinion. You know, I think our, our professionals, football professionals or ex-professionals, I think they, they can do a lot better, you know. I like what 
Ahmed Musa is doing, former Spiragos captain. I think he still plays as yeah. well. Still current captain, but it's just yeah. not the starting team anymore. Yeah. I like what he's doing. He's built complexes. He's assisting grassroots athletes, supporting the community. I agree that the government can and should do more. However, I think, if you, going back to media, if you look at news that we read, what we watch on social media, on the television, and we look at interviews from professionals, it's all about lifestyle, how much money you have, how much houses, how much cars. There's really any in-depth investigation into how football stars can help develop the society. And that is what I'd like to see. Ex-professionals, we've, we've had great football players, for instance. They, what have they, they done so far? far? If the government is failing in their responsibility, isn't there something that these legends can do as well? Only day, you cannot tell these people how to spend them. Yes. What, I mean, what Musa has done is from the good base of his art. True. Some can even call it positioning. Family and life after football, he goes back to Kano State and, you know, all of the goodwill. You ca can't really, really tell them, you know, how to respect. And then to be honest, I think that Loki, some of these ex footballers also are doing their best. Maybe not setting up big um, projects like probably the Trogba has in, in Ivory Coast, like Patrick Vieira has in Senegal. He calls one of the clubs in Senegal. Who else again? Maybe in Ghana, Master Desai, you know, who you should be France. They're doing their best. Maybe it's not as loud as, as you would want it. Once again, you cannot really, really tell them how to spend their money because they also have other businesses. And this job is the government's job. Whatever they do is complimentary. I must really admit. What can they do? Yeah, from the goodness of their art. I think, apart from Ahmed Moshe, there is a low place in Cyprus, in Sprint, at Abdullahi. There is a Musa Abdullahi who um, also has done something back in the north. I think Odio Egalo also has something going on. And then, to be honest, yeah, some, no, of those players, charity, yeah. Yeah, some of those players have also contributed to the academies that are produced there. With Fred and they still contribute to math voice to the best of yeah. our knowledge. And the convivial contribution. Do you know that a lot of these players, by virtue of the fact that money exchange ends when they go to some of the big clubs in Europe, there's what FIFA calls the solidarity payment. Solidarity payment basically means that, for example, if I'm going to a club like, let's say, also, and I mean, my transfer fee is about 20 million pounds. Mm -hmm. The solidarity print shows that any club I play for between the ages of 12 to 23, 5% has to go to that club. Okay. Yeah, 5%. The 5% of that transfer fee will be shared amongst the clubs that I played for between the ages of 12. And brought you up from the system, from the academy system. Exactly. So a lot of those, that fund also comes down to a lot of Nigerian academies. Yeah, a lot of Nigerian football academies. It's 36 Lion, as the Remo Stars Academy tool, you know. So it, it comes back. It's just that it's not always really, really you know, much. How popular. can we make it? How can we make it really, really stand out? What can the media do for us to just create a more accurate perspective of what they are really contributing then? It's difficult. It is really difficult, but they're trying. Look at Remo Stars, for example. I don't know if you've been to the Remo Stars facility. Where most stars have a football college of excellence. I've been there. They have like a it's state of the art. It's really like when you cross to Nigeria. They have it's not like state of the art. It is state of the art. They have some of the best. In fact, yeah. I've been there a couple of times because I know the owner of, of the football club and the whole football family. Um, and he told me that this facility compares favorably with that of probably Ajax Cape Town in South Africa. Yeah. It's one of the best in Africa. That's, I mean, they have. Olympic size swimming pools. They've got about four fantastic pitches where you can play football. So, a lot of people are showing it. It's just that Nigeria is a very interesting country where sometimes when this money even comes into the system, it is not well utilized. You know, it's not well utilized to get to the grassroots. But a lot of people are trying. There's FC ABD. ABD does well for grassroots football. ABD is, is Churchill. Church, Church and Lisa is the brother to Sunday Lisa. Sunday, Sunday's younger brother. Yeah. So a lot of them are doing fantastic. Joseph also has something going on in, in, in Lagos um, as well. 
Uh, we used to have Pepsi Academy. I don't know what happened to the Academy. The... So, I can, we, can we make it bigger? Yes, we can. But we're a country where there's no lights. We're in a country where, you know, the economy is down. There's inflation. There's food inflation. It's a lot. So whatever you have right now, you just have to probably manage it. But it definitely can get better. Because I will always hold on to one thing you've always been saying all through this conversation. Sports has a very huge power. Not only to even unite, sports can change the economy. I know football academies, Wolves, fortunes have changed because of the players at the grassroots level that they are sold abroad. Sports has a very fantastic, you know, capacity to change things. We just haven't tapped well into it. Yet. Oh, that was something we all agree on. Uh, Mr. Lawale Adugun, thank you so much. It's been fantastic to have you on here with your brilliant contribution. Yeah, so hopefully, while we all hope the government contributes better towards the development of the grassroots aspect of sports in our country. I, I just have not to add that, in as much as I've always burdened the government with this, hmm? private Nigeria also has a role to private in PSP, public sector and private sector participation. And I think recently we've been seeing private Nigeria also contribute their best, but it shouldn't be about the elite athletes. Thank you. That is the point. You shouldn't uh, be. One of the days when we saw the Shell Cup. Shell Cup basically was for girls with footballers in schools. I mean, we had NFPC used to contribute to grass with football. I remember when I used to watch Shell Cup on the NTA. <laughs> Young players play on, on very good pitches in Asaba, in different centers in Nigeria. I remember the principal scope. Guess oh what? God. This conversation, in fact, we mentioned football probably over 40 times. Exactly. Well, this is our first episode together and hopefully we go more in depth, elaborate more on these issues and hopefully we can come up with policies or strategies in which can help in our journey. Thank you once again, Mr. Lawale Adigo. It's been a pleasure to have you on this program, this game of Great, great work, great work you're doing. I love it. And any any time you need me to to contribute to any capacity, I'm always I'm always appreciate it much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All righty. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. To follow our journey on this mission, kindly do not forget to subscribe and check us out on social media. Until next time.